Today we're on Oleana with Jeremy, he's OE32 and Jeremy is an entrant in the 2022 Golden Globe race and we're just going to do a quick walkthrough of his boat and he's going to show us some interesting things he's done in preparation for the race. I see you've got a, a very interesting bow spread. Yeah, um, one of the things that had um, been damaged in the RS uh, rollover in the Southern Ocean was the bow spread, so th this was a new one I had made up. We added a little bit more functionality to it as well. We have, uh, I suppose, an outer four-stay, would be correct, mm. which uh, from which I can fly a Yankee style, but a Code Zero styled Yankee on, on Hanks. It's an enormous sail, it sheets back almost at the primary winches, and it's going to be a real delight to have in, mm. in lighter winds, um, certainly in the north, south and south-north aspects of the race. Mm. Um, in the Atlantic Ocean. In the Atlantic, yeah. <laughs> yes. It will probably be packed well away for the Southern Ocean, but mm. um, we'll take it from there. Um, okay. I can also fly a, an asymmetric um, reaching spinnaker, an A3, from the end of the bowsprit, and that's a very effective sail as well, mm. very nice sail to use. In your pulpit you've got some integral rings for your spinnaker poles. Yes. And I believe yeah. this is a very critical piece of kit because this forms part of your jerry rig. Yeah. I guess it's important not to have this on the mast. We obliged to, to store our spinnaker poles on deck okay. uh, for exactly that. If the boat was dismasted it's no good having your, your jerry rig go over, the, boat, over mm. the side of the boat with the mast. So these would hopefully stay on, on deck. Mm. You'll see that the, the fittings at the other end of the spinnaker pole are sub very substantial they bolted through the deck with a massive backing plate as well. Okay. And um, if they're used for jury rig, then mm. the two poles get joined together with a special mm. uh, ring, and then they can be hoisted as an A-frame kind of mast. Okay, and when you hoist them as a jury rig, they yeah. stay in position where Correct. they are connected now? Yes, they stay connected okay. there, yeah. So you've got essentially three four stays. You've got your outer four stay, the, the one you're to know, a roller furler is yeah. on. And then this inner four stay for inner four stay, yeah. for a staysail. This staysail is going to work very hard in the race. It's, mm. I've, I've resisted the temptation to put um, this on a roller furler as well. It's on it's on soft tanks. Mm. The two reasons, I mean, it, it's weight saving, mm. cost saving, and it gives some sort of redundancy as well. Yes. And it also makes it possible to fly a storm jib from the same um, from the same stay. So mm. I just have a a strop that is got two lengths to it, uh, the shorter length acts on the tack of the stay sail, the longer one on the, st on the tack okay. of, the, of the storm jib. Also for uh, strong downwind running conditions I've made a, one of the benefits of being involved with a rigging company, I've made a whisker pole okay. and um, underneath here is, a, is an additional point for the whisker pole to, to boom out the stay sail so I'll be able to put some of the Genoa uh, as much as necessary mm. rolled out to one side, boom out the uh, stay sail to the other side and uh, have a very downwind robust downwind running okay. sail, even if the, the main sail is actually mm. um, uh, stashed. Tell us about the mast, it's a Sparcraft mast. Yeah, it was built by Sparcraft in Cape Town and very much built for South African coastal conditions which are as robust as we'll find anywhere in the world. So it's an overstrength mast um, and a, a very nice section. I think it's it, it's substantially stronger than the Selden mast that it replaced um, okay. that Ari had on, on the boat. All your reefing lines are at the base of the mast yes. as, instead of going off? Um, I've, I've moved the, this winch uh, actually from the uh, coach roof to the mast. When you're reefing you, you, you've got three elements, you've got your halyard, your, your tack and your uh, reefing points and you've got to come forward at some stage unless you've got an incredible, incredibly complicated set of, of, of lines on your boat which introduces um, all sorts of friction. The tack line, the tack reefing points go onto a, onto a snap shackle just to, so that having connected them you, mm. you don't have to worry about the, them yeah. popping off the off the horn. This is for my Genoa Halyard uh, okay. on the, the, the roller furler so basically instead of having the tail of a very long Halyard lying around the deck for mm. eight months um, it terminates here 
Okay. Um, and it just requires, if I need to change it, which I will very seldom need to do, mm. um, it, it's, I just put a line on from around there yes. to a block and onto the winch. So. And over here you can see the substantial mounts for the jury rig spinnaker poles. Yeah. And you can see that's incredibly substantial. Yeah. You yeah, won't see that on the cruising boat. Yeah, you could lift the boat on those, I think. Yeah. yeah. And then you've got the Genoa track. Yep running back stays yes. for ah. th those times when you need to use the stay cell and, and, and it's lumpy sea conditions. Just brought forward with just a, a barber hauler. Okay, cool. Uh, and uh, this handrail seems incredibly useful for this, um, yeah. coming forward for reefing. Yeah, I will have uh, jack stays on, on the deck, but mm. you know, for those times that you just need to run out quickly yes. and also for working with the sextant on deck, you need oh. somewhere you don't want to be balancing somewhere so it gives me a nice place to sit hmm. put my legs under and ah, i'm not okay. gonna I'm not gonna fall over and is this one your 85 watt panel that's right yeah i have an identical one in, in the lazarette that can hmm. be plugged into this one as well yeah. i see this is a southern piece yeah. of kit is that uh, it, it came it was on the boat um okay. <laughs> ra lost the mast but he didn't lose the boom i've subsequently okay. upgraded it to a sparkcraft boom but i've just yeah. kept the okay. southern rod kicker yeah Forms less and less of a function now that I've changed the main sheet system. Mm. Um, do, you, do you think you need a kicker like this if you have a double main sheet like that? It, it's useful for um, off the wind, uh, getting uh, leech tension when sailing off off the mm. wind. But that's it's really only function. That it's hardly ever used upwind at all now. Yeah. Are these the port lights that were on the boat when you got it? Uh, yes, those are original. Um, okay, these yeah. were fitted in the uh, repair process. Okay, these are opening port lights? Yes, they are. And okay. they'll probably never open because yeah. one is over the stove and one is over the chart table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, do, yeah. do you, um, have you replaced this glass or are you I planning haven't. on replacing? Uh, I, I might. Uh, okay. it's, it's on the list. Mm. I'll see if I get that far down the list. Yeah. Okay. Having that one of them popped out during the previous edition that of the was race. this one that yeah. one there yeah, yeah. It, it popped out because the mast fell on the on the deck you know um, not because of anything else yeah. not because of wave impact yeah. Yeah. and you've got a soft spray out here i believe aura had a, a solid hard top yep yeah there's a, a school of thought which says you know these things provide quite a lot of windage mm -hmm. and if one get, ends up in extreme conditions you would rather reduce as much windage as possible on the boat. So you fold the thing down, batten the hatches and watch from, from the inside. I've got this little cockpit enclosure so that I'll you know, be able to, to sit in a protected place mm. outdoors, even with rain from the following wind, which is hopefully most of the time. You've got Luma primary winches and again, Anderson secondary yeah. winches. That that's how I got the boat. I haven't okay. changed anything there. Small and things I've added in, just uh, barber holder tweakers for the spinnaker mm. system. Yeah. And what's very interesting about that tiller is the stainless plate that you have there to lock the tiller into certain positions. Yeah, it's so called a, a, a tiller comb. Okay. And it's fantastic for just those couple of seconds you need someone else to hold the tiller for you. Mm. Just pop it down or if you're motoring where wind vane is, is is of no use and i see you've got little rope bags there i'm a little bit fanatical about keeping the cockpit nice and clean and as tidy as possible mm -hmm. especially with a twin main sheet system i removed the, the uh, main sheet track to my mind it's just something else that can go wrong and probably will mm. given the sailing conditions so i've just got a very simple twin main sheet system there's redundancy you know if one is damaged you can sail with only one but it also gives you fantastic sail shape mm. control yeah, i have exactly the same system on mm. my contessa 26 yeah, and yeah. it works incredibly yeah. well i prefer this uh, yeah. much more than a traveler setup absolutely everything on a boat is a compromise the downside is extra a lot of extra rope in the cockpit mm. yeah. you've selected a, a wind vane autopilot for your steerage yeah and a what and see this is a fantastic piece of equipment uh, it's a, a hydro generator and um, very simple to operate it just gets lowered into the water and fixed down and then it, it, it pivots so mm. you know, it accounts for changes in small changes in direction okay. and at anything over five knots it generates up to 20 amps for me so yeah. it's a really really powerful mm. thing 
I see you've selected the wind pilot wind vane. There are a lot of uh, wind vane systems out there that one could choose from and it, it very much was a case of choosing one that is particularly suited to the voyage that I'm doing and then also to the type of transom that my boat has. There's no swim platform or sugar scoop that you can climb onto to if you have to do service or repair uh, um, a wind vane. Mm. So the beauty of this system is or one of the, the the most important as, uh, things, features of it is that I can literally replace or repair any, any part of it without getting off the boat. It also happens to steer the boat particularly well. This becomes um, my remote. I, mm. It actually attaches to a point next to the companionway mm. on a piece of bungee cord so I can change okay. it without yeah. leaving the cockpit. Yeah, yeah. I can keep my pyjamas and slippers on. <laughs> you know, so. Do you think um, all the additional brackets that you have on the stern, mm. um, would that facilitate you climbing back onto the boat? There's a boarding ladder here. Oh, okay. uh, uh, it's mandatory that we have to have a we have okay. to have a boarding ladder. If you fall over and you, you get trailed behind the boat or if you just have to swim to scrub the bottom yeah. or anything? More, more that I think um, okay. because I think if if one actually falls over um, yeah, the boat's probably going to swim faster than you can. To yeah. Get back. Yeah. yeah, no definitely. Yeah. Uh, Robin Knox Johnson to get exercise he used to jump off the bow, yes. swim next to the boat and then yeah. get back onto the boat at the stern. I'm not 34 anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that Dan boy before. Yeah, it's a um, similar principle to to the self-inflating life raft, uh, okay. life jackets and life rafts. It's got a okay. CO2 canister inside that inflates uh, a tube with a flag on the top. Okay, yeah. and can you keep that for the race? Is that yes, it's it's part of the safety equipment. Uh, at the moment you have got this double backstay system. Yes. You mentioned earlier off camera that you are planning on switching this yeah. to a single backstay. Correct. It's unnecessary to have two mm. lengths of wire running all the way to the top. It's extra mm. weight and also it's not adjustable, sufficiently adjustable. So I will have a, a single backstay come into a bridle, an adjustable bridle system, so that just to help me get additional four-stay tension when I need it. Yeah. And, and do you want to adjust the backstay with a purchase? On yeah, line? it'll be a multi-purchase on on a bridle system. Our safety requirements also require us to have. Uh, Oh, seat belts. Oh. A method of attaching ourselves to the beds so we don't get chucked out um, if, if there's a rollover or something. To the oh. Oh, and this system here is just for your lead belts. Because there's nothing worse than trying to get into something mm. like this by slinging your leg over, or worse, trying to get out of it, you end up like mm. impaling yourself and doing yourself some injury. So. Do you think you'll be able to keep the cabin um, this open? With, um, do you, will you be able to stow all your food and stuff? Or will you yeah. have crates standing uh, on the floor? <laughs> at the moment, I've got about 80 days worth of food on the boat. Okay. Um, and it hasn't made a dent in the storage space. So I'll need about three times that. Look, it'll be a little crowded at first. But mm -hmm. um, the idea behind this, I mean, it's not for tennis or anything. It's, <laughs> I want to try my hardest to keep this half of the boat dry. Mm. Because I know that half of the boat will get wet, you know, mm. running sails, taking sails off deck and putting them down below spinnakers mm. and coming down off deck in foul weather gear that's mm. dripping wet. I'll try and keep it all to, to that side of the boat and this mm. also just provides a place to, for things to bump up again so they don't slide across backwards and forwards across mm. the, the saloon floor. I think this is incredibly useful. Yeah. Um, pole, yeah. It used to be, uh, it was integral to a diesel heater which was used to be fitted on the boat but unfortunately it also got sold off as part of the salvage process. Are you allowed to carry a heater on the boat, like a diesel heater? You could, I can, um, okay. you can, yeah. I see most of my competitors have got one or two heating systems. Mm. I have extra clothes. Yeah, well we live in Cape Town. <laughs> so. the, the next two jobs that are coming up are fitting the HF radio and, and the weather facts, HF weather facts. So those will be fitting under here and on this bulkhead over here. And then when I get my AIS alarm back from the boffins at University of Stellenbosch, then I'll refit that. 
this is going to be as complicated as it gets. Mm. I've divided the, the planet up into four zones. So I've got all the, the, the charts for each of the zones in these draftsman's tubes, which will hopefully be reasonably watertight. There are literally hundreds of charts that we need to take with us. And the irony of it is that the, the cost of the charts way exceeds any GPS navigation system that we could have taken instead. Um, but now we're obliged to take all these, mm -hmm. these charts with us, which is uh, an incredibly expensive exercise. Um, will your charts fit on your nav table? <laughs> just, I'm just curious. They will. Just Is, is it enough space? It, it does just fit. Okay. Um, because that's incredibly useful. It sucks when mm -hmm. if, if it... Hanging over the side, yeah, and you have yeah. to move it up the whole time. They, they do fit, but mm. it, not comfortably. It'll be one at a time. So, mm. yeah. yeah. And do you plan on sleeping in the quarter bed? Not or? at all. No. Okay. no I've got, It'll um, be a very wet area. It's, it's also awkward, awkward to access and to, to get out of in a hurry if you need mm. to. Um, so, underneath there's my, my batteries and stuff, heavy stuff in the middle, progressively getting to lighter and lighter stuff, engine spares, electrical mm. spares. And things mm -hmm. all under there so the stuff that I, I hope never to have to access uh, mm -hmm. will all be down down below there and I see you've got a propane gas hob yes um, are you ca planning on keeping the propane for the race and yeah if so how many bottles do you think you'll need um, I'm not sure uh, I've had a nine kilogram bottle which mm. the boat was designed to to carry uh, for about a year now and I haven't made a dent in it but then I haven't been living on board so mm -hmm. what I will do is uh, I've got a couple of test sails coming up I'll, I'll probably go out for a two-week sail I'll, I'll weigh the bottle before going and weigh it when I get back and see what sort of how much I've used and see if I can extrapolate that too. Oh. Where are you going? Just out and back. Okay. Yeah. I think that's the only sailing we can do at the moment. Pretty much, yeah. Since it's we're not allowed to go almost anywhere. No so. point going anywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful piece of equipment. It's actually well over 50 years old. Um, it's a mechanical um, Smith's Astral clock. Uh, it's got an eight day mechanism, so you've got to wind it every, I, I try and wind it every Sunday if I remember. Um, very, very accurate and complies with the regulations. It's just that'll be the, the primary one. I'm, I'm actually looking for a second clock which I can fit here, a smaller one, mm -hmm. so I can leave one on universal time and one keep changing one for ship's time. When you're tired and trying to work out time zones and things, it'll be nice just to be able to look at it instead of trying to work it out. Is this some artwork that you've put here, or was that it on was, the boat? No, that came off my previous boat. My, my youngest daughter painted that for, for us. It was originally a, quite a large piece, but I had to trim it to, to fit there. So that's, that's going with me. Have you have got a, a barograph? Barograph, yeah. Uh, it's, it's designed as a marine barograph. Um, mm. And the benefit it is that it over barometers that it gives you shows you trends on a piece of graph paper it's also mechanical needs to be wound every week as well at the moment you can see I've just let it run down it's mm -hmm. done a couple of circuits but you get a, either 24 hours or f seven days on on a piece of graph paper and um, you'll obviously have to carry the graph paper it's in the little drawer there at, at, under the oh, clasp. Over here. yes so it opens like that yeah and are these is this easy to find uh, on the internet, yes. Okay. Uh, it was less easy to get here by DHL and things during mm. COVID. Uh, mm. yeah, it took about three months to get here from Germany. Have you got enough stock to make I it around so. the world? <laughs> <laughs> so you'll set it for seven days? Yeah. Mm. Okay, just to make the paper last. And, you know, there's no point in having it running in, in the tropics or something mm. because your pressure is affected by the temperature and it just mm. like, goes up and down all day. Yes. Um, but certainly for the Southern Ocean it will be terribly important. Mm. So you say you've got 80 days worth of food stowed. Mm. Uh, where, do you, where are you planning on stowing your food? Is it mostly underneath the bunks? As low as possible yes. to keep the, the weight down lo as, as low as possible. Mm. Yeah. And uh, what do you stow up here? Is um, that mostly books or clothes? Or? Clothes and, and spares, medical kits, mm. yeah, just all the light stuff. The four peak that's 
Made smaller by the crash bulk. Yeah, purely sail stowage and things like wetsuits and mm. that's going to be the wet area of the boat. And okay. Um, can you fit your sails through the hatch? Yeah, most okay. of them go through the hatch okay. quite easily. Yeah. See, so you've got like a plywood Yes, I just, here. <laughs> just made that. It's you know, There's another part to that I'll show you. I'm actually quite <laughs> impressed with this setup. This little plywood box that just slots onto the, the companionway slide here is just a catch-all for everything, um, books, handheld radio, coffee mug, breakfast, lunch, whatever I happen to be using. And then it, it pairs with this um, very clever seat, which um, will be probably where I'll spend a great deal of, of time on the race. It may as well be comfortable. Um, this will be sort of command center for the boat for most of the race. If you're interested in Jeremy's sailing philosophy, I highly recommend you take a look at part one, which I've linked below in the description. Also, please consider subscribing to our channel as we will document our preparations for the Ocean Globe race on board our Swan 53.